In this video, we'll be learning a few shortcut methods for the binomial expansion, which should allow us to go quite a lot faster when finding binomial expansions. To do this, we're going to illustrate this method with the following example. Let's say we have to find all of the terms of a plus b to the power of 4. Now what the binomial expansion formula tells us that that's equal to the sum from p is equal to 0 to 4 of the binomial coefficient 4 p times a to the power of 4 minus p times b to the power of p. Now adding all of these terms up here and when I say terms I'm referring to this expression here for p equals to 0 plus the case when p equals to 1 plus so on and so forth up until the case where p is equal to 4 it looks something like this for 0 times a to the power of 4 plus the binomial coefficient for 1 times a cubed times b plus the binomial coefficient for 2 times a squared b squared plus the binomial coefficient for 3 times a b cubed plus the final term the binomial coefficient for 4 times b to the power of 4. Now if I go ahead and actually write down the values of each of these and I'll write this in purple just below the first one is equal to 1 the second one is equal to 4 the second sorry the third binomial coefficient would be equal to 6 the fourth binomial coefficient would be equal to 4 and the last one would be equal to 1 and you can go ahead and check that if you wish now what's what we notice here is there's some sort of symmetry in the binomial coefficients in other words if I focus on this middle term here I can see that on either side of that middle term the binomial coefficients are the mirror images of each other and that will actually always be the case and we're going to see about that formula in just a second but another thing I notice that really sticks out is that the first term and the last term both have a binomial coefficient equal to 1 and that will always be the case regardless of what the power of the parentheses is raised to that will always be true so we don't need to calculate the binomial coefficients for the first and the last terms otherwise we'd just be wasting time the next thing I want to point out is the fact that the second term and the term before last the binomial coefficient is simply equal to the power to which we raised the parentheses in this case 4 and again that's always going to be true so for example if we had a plus b to the power of 5 then the second term and the term before last the binomial coefficients would be equal to 5 there too so that two things that you really need to keep in mind there the first and the last term have binomial coefficients which are equal to 1 and the second and the second before last they have binomial coefficients which are equal to the power to which we raise the parentheses now I'm gonna go back to what I was saying before I mentioned a bit of symmetry in the in the binomial coefficients here and in fact there's a rule which highlights what I just said and that rule is that the binomial coefficient n p will always equal to the binomial coefficient of n n minus p now what we just wrote here makes it look really quite complicated but in fact if I just consider a quick example here I'll use these two coefficients let's see we would have 4 1 and that would be equal to factorial 4 over factorial of 4 minus 1 times factorial of 1 which would be equal to factorial 4 over factorial 3 times 1 and hopefully you can see that will just be equal to 4 and now if I consider the other term which would be binomial coefficient 4 3 this would be equal to factorial 4 
over a factorial of 4 minus 3 times factorial 3. This leads us to factorial 4 over factorial 1 times factorial 3, which again will just lead us to 4. And actually, this explains why there's symmetry in all of these cases. On either side of the middle term, any term which is at equal distance from the middle on either side, their binomial coefficients will be equal. Let's go ahead and look at another example just to convince ourselves of this. Let's say, for example, we had to calculate the binomial coefficient 6, 2. That would definitely be equal to factorial 6 over factorial 6 minus 2 times factorial 2, which would be equal to factorial 6 over factorial 4 times factorial 2. And without actually calculating that, I'm going to go right ahead, right ahead and say that that should be equal to the binomial coefficient of 6, 6 minus 2, which would be equal to the binomial coefficient of 6, 4. That in turn leads us to factorial 6 over factorial 6 minus 4 times factorial of 4. And you can see right away that leads us to factorial 6 over factorial 2 times factorial 4. This definitely confirms that those two things are equal. So keep that in mind. It, it'll allow us to basically do half as many calculations. The last thing I want to point out here is the following. And I'll take a simpler, simpler binomial expansion just to go a little faster. If we had to consider a plus b cubed, that would be equal to a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Um, what I want us to focus on for a second are the powers of a as we go from left to right. Meaning, say, if we just look at the power of a from one term to the next going from left to right, what we see is that the first term has power of 3, the second one has a power of 2 on the a. The third term just has a, but that means a to the power of 1. And the last term, well, doesn't seem to have an a, but in fact, that's a to the power of 0. Because remember, any number raised to the power of 0 is just 1. And that, again, is always going to be true. So, for example, if ever I had a plus b to the power of 7... I'm not going to write the expansion, but one thing I know for certain is that one from one term to the next, I'll have the first term will have an a7, the second term will have an a6, a to the power of 5, a to the power of 4, a to the power of 3, a to the power of 2, a, and then it will just be 1, so a to the power of 0. That will always be true. So do keep that in mind. The next thing I'm going to ask us to focus on for a second are the powers of the b coefficient, or just b. In the first term, we don't see a b. But again, that just means b to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. So it's b to the power of 0 on the first one. In the second term, we see it's 3a squared b. Since it's just b, that means b to the power of 1. In the third term, we see b squared, so power is 2. And the final term, it's b cubed. So that's to the power of 3. And that again will always be true. The power of b will always go from 0 and increase by one unit every single term we go through, all the way up to, of course, the power of the exponent. Another quick trick just to make sure that you're doing things correctly in a test, you want to make sure that if you look at the power of a and the power of b, that they always add up to 3 on any one term. So I can see the first term, the power of a was 3, the power of b was 0, so 3 plus 0 is 3. Similarly, on the second term, power of a was 2, and the power of b was 1. If I add those two, I get 3. In the same way, on the third term, the power of a was 1, and the power of b was 2. If I add those, I get 3. And the last term, the power of a was 0, and the power of b was 3. If I add those, I get 3. 
I always get the power to which we raised a plus b at the very beginning. And that's just a quick check to make sure that you've got the powers right in your expansion. And there you have it. Those are just a few of the shortcuts that you can definitely use with binomial expansions. You may want to come back later, watch it again a few times, and pick up on all the tricks there. Hope that helps.